Hey everybody, Dale and Rick back again, and uh, this time we're going to go over some questions and some things that happened with uh, us at the ISA show. We had a lot of people come up to us, ask us a lot of different questions about this industry and things that they're dealing with right now, new guys in the industry. Guys that have been in the industry for four or five years, you know, got 20, 25 people working for them. They've got, you know, a million and a half dollars worth of bucket trucks and, and cranes and whatnot, and they're doing the business. But they asked us about certain questions. Mm -hmm. You know, what was one of those questions that you ran into well, a lot? There was one thing, especially smaller companies, you're like starting out two or three people and as you're growing, the hard thing is like, when I first started just me in a truck, I start getting more people and you never think somebody's doing as well as you can do it or as fast as you can do it. Uh -huh. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, like my wife told me a long time ago, if you keep pushing the guy out of the way and going up the ladder yourself, you're always going to be the guy going up the ladder. So. Mm -hmm. That's you exactly have to understand, true. not everybody's going to do it exactly the same way, and not everybody's going to be as fast as you are, but you're going to have to step aside and let them roll with it. Otherwise, you're not going to have time to go talk to the vendors or go out and develop new customers or new relationships. Yeah, know? so you kind of have to stair stack how you place yourself in the company. I mean, obviously, we've been doing this a long mm -hmm. damn time, and there's still times that I'll go out in that booth and I'll spray. There's still times that you'll go out in an install. We're not talking about emergency situations <laughs> that you have to do everything yeah. that you have to do in your power. What we're talking about is if you're doing everything yourself or if you're doing everything with two other guys, when do you hire that third guy, mm -hmm. the fourth guy? When do you start getting project managers? When do you start getting dedicated installers? And that's at the time, and it's just, it's just scary thing because you're adding to payroll. Payroll is our basis expense. I think it's everybody's biggest expense. You're adding payroll and you're taking away control because somebody who drives off in your bucket truck, you got to count on them doing the right thing. Yes. You know? Yeah, exactly. So it's a lot of responsibility. And it's a lot of faith. That's mm -hmm. why you have to hire your people, make sure they know what they're doing. Even if they do it a different way than you guys do, they're going to learn the business. You train mm -hmm. them how you want, but you have to be able to, yeah. to you know, let them do their thing yes, as well. Let them do their thing. Yep, and don't be afraid. I'm I'm a bad one with that too because <laughs> we just now, after all these years, set up project managers. And these project managers are guys that already worked for the company. We didn't go out and hire new people for this mm -hmm. specific thing. And man, number one, they took to it like ducks to water. Man, they're they're out there doing a great job, which yes. alleviated me and Rick from doing the a daily minutia of dealing with the client, dealing with what's going on with the product, when's it gonna be here, lining up the installs and setting mm -hmm. these things up. Now, that responsibility is on these other two guys. They yeah, still answer to us. They really stepped up, our guys, you know, it's like the above and beyond what we would expect. 100%, you know? and I was very resistant to that for years and years because nobody can do it like me and Rick can do it, you know, it's exactly what we're talking about here. You so there's a lot grow. of other sign guys out yeah. there that are doing the same thing that we're going through but you'll never grow your company if you think that way. If that's what you want to do, grow your company bigger. Number one step. Well, All that's right. another thing too, you know, find out what you like to do and what you do best. Not everybody wants to have 36 employees. Right. You know, people are happy two or three, you know, and that, that's fine. You do what makes you happy and find your niche and where you make your good money at and stick in that niche. Right, yeah. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to do wraps and painting and fabrication and you know not at all not at all and we think about this all the time you know i'm, I'm one of those five-year guys you know it's so always planning beginning of the year hey what are we going to get accomplished this year what are our goals this year what are our goals in five years where do we want to be in five years ten years you know so that's how we've driven this company yeah. over all these years we have these goals now i'm and not they're ever changing too they, they, they always change evolving. you got to be willing to move them around but you know basically we know that this year we want to buy a router table yeah. and you know by well, this year we want to buy a bus since you mentioned that, that's another thing. When do you step out and buy equipment? Mm -hmm. How many years do we go where we outsource all of the router stuff? You know, a lot and, of years. Until we realize we're going every week to pick stuff up, it's like now it's time. Look at how much we're spending on it. Now it's time to buy the table. Yep. And you don't necessarily have to start out with a seven by fourteen table, or you know, with yeah. tool changers and all that. You know, you could start even with the used table. Same with bucket trucks. You look at the expense and think, oh my goodness, you know, look at what I got to pay every month, but. When it's, you really look at it, how much you're paying to outsource that or how much mm -hmm. you can make on it every month, you, you know, 100%. you just got to be prepared to take that leap. Yep, and the way we've looked at it too, as far as equipment goes, you're always growing into that, right? So don't be afraid to invest in a piece of equipment because you're going to be able to do a lot more work with that piece of equipment. Right, so it right. brings me an example about our bucket truck. So we bought our very first brand new Altec L60 
uh, bucket truck a couple years ago, a few years ago. And yeah, we had to wait till I wasn't in the bucket truck anymore till we got one with air conditioning and automatic. Apparently, I wasn't allowed to have that. <laughs> I don't think they had trucks with air conditioning back when you were in bucket trucks. It wasn't pulled by horses, dude. <laughs> it was. You didn't get gas. You fed them carrots. That's how you moved your truck. I don't know. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> well, that was off topic. But, yeah. no, the deal is we looked at our financials, okay? So if you run your, you run your company based on your financials, you get your P&L every month, you get your, your, your process down, and you're looking at that money because, you know, don't fool yourself. All this business is about is making money because you're trying to make money for you, your family, your employees, their families. Uncle it's Sam. A, oh. They get their cuts. Yeah, they do. But it's all about that making that money because you want your people to make money too. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is your legacy. So it's about making money. So if you're running on your financials, we knew that at the time, two hundred thousand dollar bucket truck, which is now a quarter million dollars type of thing, we knew that that payment on that truck was going to be forty two hundred bucks or whatever whatever it, yeah, was. whatever it was. Right. So we went back to our financials and we looked at all the money that we were spending on rentals, like lift rentals mm -hmm. from Sunbelt, United Rentals, which we still do every once in a while yeah. because there's certain things a truck won't reach or won't be in town or something mm -hmm. like that. But according to our financials, and we went through the last 26 months, and we were spending $4,638 every single month on renting equipment that was giving us no benefit at all. Mm -hmm. So we go, we look at the Outtech, it was a couple hundred grand, I think the payment was $3,800 and change, so it's gonna save us $800, $900 a month, plus at the end of five years when that truck's paid off, it's still worth a buck and a quarter. Oh yeah, we have a good investment and a good asset. Huge difference, so that's what you gotta look at. How much money are you spending to give somebody else your router work? How much money are you spending per square foot to get your prints done from somebody else? Is it worth putting a $35,000 printer on your mm -hmm. floor? Look at your financials and go from there. We might even do a whole episode on that. That's the financial thing, it's a strong point. No, it's the same thing when we stepped into this huge building. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, it was. We definitely knew we wanted to buy a building. We've been renting for a long time, but we looked at this like, oh my gosh, this thing is huge. Another thing people came <laughs> to us about: How do you know when it's time to get a bigger building? Well, if you don't have room to walk through your building, it's time to get another <laughs> building or clean it out. Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal, and and this is our experience from the get go. Rick's heard this story two million times. I started the original company in my mom's garage when I was 16 years old in my mom's single car garage. Built that for a little while. Moved into my first space, it was 1,200 square feet, mm -hmm. right, in Longwood. Then I moved to another place a few years later that was 2,400 square feet. Then I blew out the wall in that space a couple years later and made it 4,800 square feet, right? And then by this time, we needed a little bit more. So we moved to a building on 436 in Altamont that had 6,000 square feet. And that's when we became oh, partners. That's when I came into your yep. well, because I had started with my bucket truck parked in my front yard. There you go. Well, and then somebody called the county on me, and then I had to rent a yard. So then I had to get a container to sit on that to start storing my stuff. Then we got a little bigger. Then I got a little storefront. You know, I think it was 2,000 square feet, yep. maybe, with a yard in the back to park our two trucks. And so you just build a little a little bit at a time. So when it, after Rick and I became partners in 2000, we're in a 6,000 square foot place and we were busting at the seams, couldn't do it anymore. It, it was ridiculous. No parking. So we found a place down the street that was 10,000 square feet and we leased it. And we walked in that joint and we were like, hello, <laughs> we're never gonna fill this place up. It was crazy, right? Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about it in one of the other episodes Probably. here, but it was massively huge, at least for five years. And then we took the space next door, which gave us 19,000 square feet, I think. Mm -hmm. And we were in that combined 19,000 square feet for 15 years. When it came to the time when we had to buy this 30,000 square foot beautiful building on two and a half acres in Sanford, Florida, we were in that same trepidation that you guys are going through, but we had to look back at our history and we had to say, man, yeah. we went from this 24 to this thousand and this to this 10,000 and every single time within a year, that place was mm -hmm. filled full packed to the brim. The building will bring you more business. I don't know how it works. 
it's it's the law of attraction. <laughs> if you have Somehow this space, works, you will be able to, to do that work. Do not be afraid of going getting your company bigger. Only if it's financially feasible, though. Yeah. You still got to pay attention. You can't go crazy, you yeah. know, and buy a ten million dollar yeah, building when you're you know. Yeah, but you just can't starting. grow if you don't have room to do more work. Exactly. And three years ago, when we bought this building, we moved in here. We knew for a fact we'd have a couple thousand square feet to rent at least a couple places out. Yeah, that never worked. Nope. That we filled this place up <laughs> right now. So don't be afraid to grow. Make it financially responsible mm -hmm. and uh, grow this business, man. Well, I hope that helps somebody out there. You know, these are a lot of the questions that we got when we were out there in Las Vegas and some of the things that we questioned ourselves as we were going through the industry through the years. You know, So hopefully that'll help somebody out there. Yep. And all you guys that are watching our show every week and, you know, enjoying the content, if there's other questions that we didn't answer, obviously that's just three there. Mm -hmm. Leave a comment. Leave the questions in the comment section. We need your support. It'd be great to hear from you guys. We'll answer back and, you know, take it from yeah, there. Yep. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching. And please hit subscribe and tell all your friends. Tell all your friends. See you guys later.